Hi, my name is Kim de Jong and I'm an assistant professor of clinical psychology at Leiden University in the Netherlands. And today I'm going to talk to you about um, differences in outcomes between therapists. So I often get questions from, from people um, and they say, I know this person and they're suffering from these and these complaints. Do you know a good therapist for this person? And I often have to say, I'm not sure because I don't know the outcomes of that therapist um, or any therapist in, in my area. And um, so how do I judge whether this is actually uh, somebody that would work well with these types of issues or with this particular type of person? And I want to get some a little bit deeper into that today in this video. When we're talking about differences between therapists and outcomes, in the scientific literature this is called therapist effects. And um, these therapist effects, they explain approximately between, you know, 5 and 15% and of variance in outcomes. Now, what does that mean? Well, you can compare it a little bit to the size of a particular intervention or a particular technique that has approximately the same sort of uh, size of effect on the outcomes. And so it, it's a little bit comparable. But a lot of research has focused on interventions where not a lot of research has really looked into what is it about therapists that makes them effective. And, um, but it's important because the differences in outcomes between therapists can be quite large. Well, to illustrate that, um, I wanna talk to you about a study by Okishi et al, where they found that the 10% best performing therapists uh, did about twice as well in terms of positive outcomes as the 10% on the lower end of the range. They also had only half the deteriorated cases um, that the 10% on the lower end had. So it can make a large difference whether you're treating by one therapist or the other. Um, so, when we're thinking about which therapist is likely to be uh, more effective than another, one of the things that often comes up is um, years of experience. So we often think that more experienced therapists are also more effective therapists. Now this is not necessarily the case. In fact, there's been a study that analyzed a lot of um, therapists over time and found that on average, therapists do not improve with years of experience in terms of their effectiveness. In fact, there is even on average, a slight decline in effectiveness. So last week, a paper came out on therapist effects that had a fairly large sample. Um, so this was a paper that was um, by Del Cadillo and colleagues and um, they uh, looked at the outcomes of more than 4,000 patients that were treated by 69 therapists. And for the purpose of this video, I'm going to focus on the results that were uh, found in CBT therapists. And they had 33 CBT therapists that they uh, looked into. So, um, kind of like we discussed just now, they indeed found that um, there was no effect of clinical experience uh, on outcomes. They also did not found um, an effect of reflective ability, which is sometimes also mentioned by uh, therapists as a potential factor, um, or uh, by the technical competence of the therapist, which could also, of course, be an explanatory uh, variable. Um, what they did find, however, that was that therapists with above average openness to experience had poorer outcomes. Now, how can we understand these results? What does that mean? So, the authors, they, they state that openness to experience is actually often also associated with a lower adherence to treatment protocols. Now there's also research that suggests that maybe the relationship between adherence and treatment outcomes is curvilinear, which means that if you're too kind of rigid with the protocol, 
um, and too strict with it, you're not gonna get good outcomes. But if you're too loose and too much fluctuating and too much deviating from the protocol, you're also gonna get uh, poor outcomes. Whereas if you find sort of the right middle, middle ground, you're sticking to the protocol, but you're being creative with it and you're deviating from it for good reasons, that is actually the zone where you get the best outcomes. Okay, so what does this mean for your practice? So if you're using protocols um, and you deviate from them, um, under what circumstances do you do that and why? So it's known from the literature, for instance, that sometimes we deviate from the protocol, not because we can't get the client to do it, but because we ourselves are uncomfortable with it. So maybe ask yourself, is that something that I sometimes do? Um, or maybe there's other reasons uh, that you can think about and reflect upon. So in the upcoming videos, um, we're gonna discuss lots of other things you can do in your clinical practice to improve your outcomes. Um, and so we're hoping that you wanna subscribe to our channel and get back and watch our future videos. Thank you.